hello and welcome back to this uh, video channel and um, this video uh, YouTube channel and uh, video playlist for um, lectures about nursing informatics so last uh, lecture video we have discussed an introduction of um, nursing informatics and for this uh, lecture series for this playlist we are going to focus on the theories some some of the theories models and frameworks uh, which supported the uh, uh, start of nursing informatics and also human computer interactions so this uh, lecture series will uh, provide some important um, information concepts about uh, some theories who engage in and, and also nurse theories who engage who, or whose works have impact on uh, human computer interactions uh, to improve the healthcare system and processes uh, the purpose of this uh, of this uh, lecture series is to or this topic is to elevate the or to improve okay your understanding of the theories um, used to uh, evaluate uh, technologies clinical technologies also to um, to identify important uh, human uh, computer interaction approaches and um, especially during the first um, or the middle part of the development of nursing informatics there is a uh, rapid and continuous uh, change um, in in the history of nursing informatics and also um, we must always know that uh, human factor is a uh, um, very important um, f um, what's this? very important part of of course your human computer interaction and the application of nursing informatics okay, the, your intelligence your intellect as a nurse is still more important okay technology uh, won't work without human uh, initiation and uh, interventions so it is important that we all know that humans are still uh, superior than this uh, technologies in the sense of nursing informatics nurses okay human factor are still better than um, and higher than the technologies that we uh, use in our practice Okay, so we have here human computer interactions. So when we say human computer interactions, this uh, emerged in the 1980s as an important um, field incorporating the concepts of computer science, cognitive science, and also human uh, factors. Um, engineering also uh, is included. Uh, and it has grown okay, into a science incorporating the concepts and approaches in other fields uh, HCI or human computer interaction um, is concerned with the interactions between people and computers so this is an area of study uh, concentrating on human factors concentrated on by human factor experts uh, ACI is also defined as a study of how people design, implement, and evaluate interactive computer systems in the context of users, tasks, and work, according to Nelson Staggers 2014. And again, I uh, repeat, human factor is important. It's the most important um, or more important between the two um, factors, human and computers. So what is human factor? Human factors or human factor is a discipline that optimizes relationships between technology and the humans. Okay, according to this um, cited authors uh, theories. In healthcare, human factors 
uh, human factor experts attempt to understand uh, between humans uh, the tools uh, we use or the technologies that we use and the working environments and also the tasks that you do in a certain environment in a certain technology or uh, tool um, experts also apply the information about human characteristics and the behavior to determine the maximum or the fullest uh, design uh, specific uh, specified for for the tools that uh, people use uh, every day in in our field nurses or the healthcare providers use in the daily tasks in the daily life okay so the goal of um, uh, human factor approach is a uh, nurse-led system okay according to McCormick and this is to optimize the interactions between the nurses and the tools again they use to perform their jobs okay and when I say um, giving uh, the best uh, performance of jobs we also emphasize here the um, the lessening or decreasing errors and maximizing efficiency in in work as we all know we are dealing with lives so we want to improve the quality of life of these patients these clients and also to um, optimize their uh, well-being okay so that is uh, the study on human computer interaction so let us uh, review okay, or discuss present some theory supporting nursing informatics um, nursing theories are about nursing practice such as uh, McCormick would uh, cite a nurse's interaction or relationships to uh, with individuals groups or communities this is also known as patient or client um, this is focused on applying the nursing process Okay. Again, nursing theory is about nursing practice. Focus on applying the nursing process. So, uh, since you are already second year, I know that you are already familiar okay, with nursing process, and uh, this is the the um, most imp one of the most important, if not the most important, foundation in in the nursing course or in the nursing profession. Uh, nursing process or healthcare process for other references um, so aside from nursing process we also have the novice uh, expert theory of banner uh, we're going to have uh, another discussion in this in the next slides and other nurse educators adopted this model to explain how nursing students and professional nurses acquired nursing skills so from a uh, novice a nurse or a student to an expert nurse or student computer science uh, we have mentioned this one already in our uh, first uh, video lecture together with cognitive science and um, the other underpinnings the, f the five components of health informatics um, computer science is study of algorithms for solving computation and uh, computation problems then information science just to give another definition focuses on the gathering manipulation classification storage and retrieval of recorded knowledge okay. um, communication theory um, since we are talking about humans here we are talking about um, um, nurse and and patient or clients so it is important to somehow mention communication okay uh, communication theory uh, uses the core concepts and uh, principles uh, developed since uh, this is used to analyze information and to transfer and uh, effective uh, transfer this information by the nurse or the client to their um, receivers respective receivers uh, with uh, effectiveness and efficiency okay so that's the main um, concept of it when you say communication theory so 
the core concepts are there, the principles are there, and it should uh, lead to analysis of information so that um, there can be um, effective and efficient uh, communication. Then we also have cognitive science, uh, this study of the mind. As I've said in the last video lecture, it is the intellect, it is the intelligence okay, of the person or of a nurse in our uh, profession of how the nurse thinks and looks at uh, the mental activities and processes. Okay. Systems theory, uh, this is quite lengthy theory. Uh, um, I uh, usually advise uh, to review this concept in the TFN or in Fundamentals of Nursing. Okay. So system theory relates to the properties of a system or systems as a whole which uh, focuses on the organization and interdependence of relationships within a system. Okay, So the parts, the interdependence of the parts of a system to function as a whole. Okay, So that is uh, systems theory. Then, okay, going back to Patricia Benner's Novice to Expert Theory. Actually, this is started by Hubert and uh, Dreyfus in 1980. As um, this is known as Trifus model model of skill acquisition, uh, you can search the internet. Uh, as you can see, there is a model out of this Trifus uh, skill acquisition uh, within the field of nursing informatics. This theory can be applied to okay the development of nursing informatics skills, competencies, knowledge, and expertise in nursing informatics specialist. Okay or what we call um, or who we call nurse informaticists okay um, also in nursing informatics the development of technological system uh, competencies in practicing nurses working in in an institution um, under this principle also the education of nursing students from first year to graduation and also the transition from graduate nurse to an expert nurse so the main concept here is uh, a professional nurse or a uh, budding nurse or a first year nurse to a senior nurse to a graduate nurse or from a freshly graduate nurse to an expert okay so that is um, overview of the novice to expert uh, theory by Benner Okay, so novice. Uh, who is a novice? A usually useful description of a novice is one does not know anything of the subject um, or maybe a little okay, knowledge about the subject. Memorize its context free features of a, a concept of, of something. Okay, and novice uh, person or nurse is usually given rules for determining an action on the basis of these features and to improve okay, being a novice um, uh, uh, a novice nurse should uh, be uh, uh, should need monitoring either by self-observation or by provision of feedbacks so that uh, the nurse uh, or the novice would um, improve okay, and step to the next level. A novice usually does not know anything uh, of the subject he or she is uh, approaching. And usually the, the technique uh, or the strategy of a novice person is memorization. Okay? And as we have said, the novice is given rules for determining an action on the basis of the features. Okay? And um, example, a nurse learning to use a new hospital information system or your HIS needs uh, explicit instruction and rules okay, to learn to use the computer interface 
and manipulate the software. It's like for example, in our case right now, during the uh, maybe your first year or last year, uh, when you when almost all of us were having a hard time in in manipulating our LMS, we were almost all considered to be novice in uh, using our learning management system. Okay, so. <clears throat> advanced beginner okay the next one is an advanced beginner so when you say advanced beginner uh, is, is still dependent on rules but uh, as the person gains more experience with real life situations uh, he or she begins to notice additional aspects that can be applied okay, to related conditions okay so that's one step higher than the novice For a competent person, for a competent nurse for our profession, um, at this stage, the competent person uh, or the nurse uh, grasps all uh, the relevant rules and facts of the field or of the profession of the work and is, for the first time, able to bring his or her own judgment to each case. Okay? And in this stage also of learning, um, it is usually often characterized by the term problem solving. Okay, so from memorization, uh, uh, way of thinking or way of learning, uh, he or she approaches the high, one of the highest forms of learning, which is problem solving. Okay, a competent level nurse would be able to use a hospital information system compared to the novice uh, level. Um, a competent nurse is using the interface with ease okay? uh, without so much difficulty and possibly uh, lesser supervision lesser monitoring okay? and know how to problem solve um, technical difficulties or interpret conflicting data so there is a chance that the competent nurse uh, knows how to troubleshoot or solve uh, situational problems. A proficient nurse, um, this is the fourth stage, is called fluency and is characterized by the progress of the learner from a step by step uh, analysis and solving of the situation to the holistic perception of the uh, entirety of the situation. So you're looking at the whole picture. Okay, uh, you become holistic in approach. Okay, uh, the proficient hospital information system learner would know how to interpret data and all departmental uh, information and provide guidance to other disciplinary members as needed. Okay, so that is a proficient nurse and who is an expert. Okay, an expert is um, uh, f uh, has a range of or a, a um, repertoire of uh, experience situations. Okay, he has vast okay, experiences already that normally each uh, specific situation immediately dictates an intuitive uh, appropriate action. So it's, it's like he or she already mastered what to do in a certain situation with little time of thinking not so much of deep thinking and he acts uh, according to uh, what is needed in the situation based on his or her experience and of course based on the standards set by the institution and after a great deal of experience um, using a system in everyday situations, for example, in the case of a nurse informaticist, the expert nurse discovers that without his uh, consciously, uh, without uh, consciously using any rules, situations simply elicit from him or her appropriate uh, responses. Okay? The appropriate, uh, the the uh, proficient uh, nurse is already immersed. Okay, with his skills 
and um, he sees to it that is it is done, it is accomplished, and um, the expert not only knows what needs to be achieved, but also um, um, he or she knows how to achieve the goal or to reach the, the goal or knows how to accomplish the goal of any situation okay so that is an expert okay so that is our novice expert theory in the application of nursing informatics okay so um here in this slide we are going to mention organizational behavior uh, it's where uh, organizations are examined using the methods drawn from economics, sociology, political science, anthropology, and psychology. So these are all concepts based on uh, the study of man. Okay. So also change theory because change uh, processes and uh, uh, change processes entail not only structures and ways of doing tasks but also the performance okay, expectations and perceptions of all involved parties okay and with change learning is also there and as uh, we all know learning is gradual learning is a step-by-step -step, um, process learning is is um, um, really taking time uh, to to result to changes Okay, or to result to acquisition of the knowledge or the skill, even let's say the attitude of becoming a uh, um, nurse informaticist. Okay, so this is usually taught through studies, uh, modeling from a teacher or from a mentor, and also through the experience. Okay, so that is learning, that is change, and also. Uh, behavior in in uh, a uh, profession of a nurse so models in nursing informatics these models are representations of some aspect of the real world the foundations of nursing informatics are the core phenomena and nursing informatics uh, models this according to McCormick and core phenomena are data information knowledge and wisdom are related to diKw theory which i'll be uh, presenting later um, and these phenomena undergo transformations um, this usually starts from data until it reaches wisdom okay so it's also important to remember that different models uh, reflect uh, different viewpoints and are not necessarily competitive and not necessarily permanent not necessarily that's the only way that you do it if you're if you're really relying or depending on a model on a certain process or step but uh, there is no one right model okay there's no one right model So first is uh, a model of uh, Graves and Concurrence. This is proposed uh, in 1989 and their model placed uh, data, information, and knowledge in a sequential box or sequential boxes with one-way arrow that is uh, pointing from data to information to knowledge. Uh, so you can see the inside of the box which bears data information and knowledge okay there is literacy management and also there is informatics so this model is a direct depiction or representation of the definition of nursing informatics um, according to them this model uh, nursing informatics is the combination of computer science um, information science and nursing science and this is designed uh, to assist in the management and processing of nursing data information and knowledge to uh, support the practice of nursing and the delivery of nursing care 
Okay, so that's why their core uh, variables here are data, information, and knowledge. Okay, now see, informatics is, as you can see, is a linear progression from data to information to knowledge. Okay, and um, management processing uh, is integrated within each of these elements. Okay, so that's why literacy management points down or arrows down to the three core variables and also informatics goes up okay uh, to the three um, core variables of data information and knowledge and this leads to discussions and um, um, what's this designs okay and um, management processing is integrated within the elements uh, representing nursing informatics also as a proper management of uh, knowledge from data that is converted to information to knowledge okay, so that is um, Greaves and concurrence model so we move to the next model we have Shwerian's uh, model proposed by uh, Patricia Shwerian in 1986. This is a model of nursing informatics intended to uh, stimulate and guide system systematic research in the discipline. Okay, so this is all about research, how to come up with a systematic a process uh, research. Um, so this is proposed okay again uh, to stimulate and guide systematic research in nursing informatics uh, this is a model a framework that enables identification of significant information needs that can uh, foster research uh, this is somewhat similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs okay so the physiologic needs here the basic needs here are raw materials okay raw materials and um, we have speaking of raw materials we have four elements here raw material technology um, users and also goal okay so when you say raw materials these are usually nursing related information okay as we have said nursing is really demanding uh, information okay? comprehensive information then technology the second level going up is a computing system comprised of hardware or software or otherwise known as their computers so uh, next to computers are the users and these are usually the nurses the students okay? and number four the goal or the objective uh, goal or objective is uh, getting towards uh, the preceding elements are directed okay so this again provides a framework from identifying significant information needed so um, since we're talking about information we really need raw materials these are the data these are the information and knowledge that is very much needed and um, from there you can really foster uh, to have uh, research again the the focus of this model is because of the sparse volume of researches okay. so that is Swerian's uh, Swerian's model then we have Turley's James Turley's uh, model in 1996 um, According to this model, uh, the core components of informatics uh, is represented here. Uh, cognitive science, information science, and computer science. And they are depicted as intersecting circles, as you can see in the illustration. Um, nursing science is, this according to the model, nursing science is a larger uh, circle that completely encompasses the intersecting circles okay as you can see we have cognitive science which is the green one information the red one 
uh, computer science the uh, uh, the blue one and the lighter uh, blue circle is uh, um, encircling the three uh, other uh, disciplines okay uh, that's why it's uh, represented as a larger circle a larger concept that is encompassing the three other concepts um, nursing informatics is the intersection between the discipline specific science and the uh, area of informatics okay and uh, again the core components of informatics are cognitive science information science computer science but we know that um, in in our previous uh, lecture video this uh, we have additional two concepts okay one there is wisdom and one there is health science Okay. Nursing informatics is intersection between the discipline specific science or the nursing and the area of informatics. Again, nursing informatics is the intersection of uh, the the three circles okay, between the disciplines and the area of informatics. So you just add nursing plus informatics equals nursing informatics. Uh, next is according to Mastrian's foundation of knowledge. Okay. Proponent is uh, aside from Kathleen Mastrian is uh, D. Uh, McGonigal, and as you can see, there are cones, there are squares, and an oval in the model. Okay, the the base of this model shows data. Okay, I hope you can uh, visualize it in the um, picture or you can use your LMS or your internet to search for this uh, McGonigal and Masrian's uh, knowledge model. So the base of this model shows the data and information uh, distributed randomly. And from this base and the square, uh, transparent cones grow upward and they intersect. Okay. The upward cones are represent acquisition, generation, and dissemination of knowledge. So you acquire, you acquire knowledge, you generate knowledge, and you disseminate or share knowledge. And knowledge processing is represented by the intersecting or intersections of these three cones. As you can see, uh, they overlap or in other words, they intersect with one another. And circling and connecting all of the cones is the feedback. The uh, is it a color blue uh, oval? Okay, so that is the feedback. Then we have here a Filipino theories. Okay, nurse theories. Uh, Sir uh, Rosano Loxin and. Uh, I was privileged enough to meet him and talk, have a conversation with him, um, I think, two years ago, three years ago, when we um, uh, attended a international conference. Okay? So, his theory is technological competency as caring in nursing, a model for practice. So the conceptual uh, model that represent that presents the link between technology and caring in nursing as coexisting uh, harmoniously. Okay, so nursing and technology should work harmoniously to um, give a client or patient a quality care uh, service. Okay. So according to this uh, uh, model, uh, it is grounded. Uh, there are some assumptions, as we all know. Uh, it is grounded in the harmonious coexistence between technology and caring in nursing. So when you say uh, harmonious coexistence, the nurses value technological competence as an expression of caring. Okay? So uh, when you are competent enough in, um, uh, what's this, in manipulating 
in in um, operating technologies uh, it's one way of expressing care to your client so on on other terms or in in other words you should be competent okay when you become a nurse when you're a nurse you are you should be competent with these technologies to give appropriate care to provide appropriate care then dimension of technological value in the theory so we have technology as completing human beings technology as machine technologies and technologies that mimic human beings and human activities so when you say technology as completing human beings uh, we are talking about uh, a an ideal human body and what is an ideal human body physically you should be complete body parts are complete so the word is completing so it's either you replace uh, lost parts biologically or mechanically when I say mechanically you use your uh, you use prosthesis okay um, or uh, artificial ones um, or uh, organic uh, replacements or transplants organ transplants technology as machine technologies so these are referring to uh, computers and gadgets that we use or nurses use in their care for for pa to patients to their clients and technologies uh, that mimic human beings and human activities um, are referring to um, cyborgs are you referring to maybe uh, robots androids okay uh, this is to meet the demands of nursing care if ever for example a human nurse cannot really um, cater to uh, the, uh, the cater to the demands especially with the number of patients in the um, healthcare setting okay? then technological compet competency as caring in nursing so um, again this is um, uh, the coexistence of nursing and technology this is the harmonization between two concepts of, of nursing and technology that can really exist and um, when technology is used to know persons continuously in the moment uh, nursing is lived okay so we are not saying that um it's only the technology that will really uh give attention to to the patient okay human the nurse should also be there and um since there is a uh, uh harmony between nurse and technology um you will know better okay the your your client your patient then we have uh, DIKW model I think uh, is it um, I have mentioned this one already DIKW stands for data information knowledge and this time we have added one concept wisdom okay uh, data are discrete entities that are usually des described objectively without interpretation and uh, knowledge is um, our information our data that is interpreted uh, in an organized or structured uh, manner knowledge is an in information that has been synthesized so that interrelationships are identified and formalized so I'll be uh, discussing this more later okay? and g I'll give example uh, wisdom is a is knowledge applied in a practical way or translated into actions so here is the model for um a the ikw okay so the the four circles bear the 
four core components of data information, knowledge and wisdom, and as you can see, it points upward. Okay, so the past experiences, past information, now leads to knowledge, the present uh, knowledge, and future wisdom, okay, of the person. And um, um, the y-axis and the x-axis is also present there. Uh, the y-axis pertains to the complexity of the of the situation okay, or of the system okay then the x-axis is pertaining to human intellect okay, or human intelligence so data is uh, in in this is in another um, um, another explanation data is raw okay um, there is no meaning to it okay and um, information is data that has given a meaning or that was given a meaning knowledge is an information that has been synthesized so that interrelationships are identified and formalized wisdom uh, the highest level is knowledge applied in a practical way or translated to actions or simply you put it into application your knowledge is applied so that is wisdom you are wise okay if you know how to properly apply transfer to a situation your knowledge so taking for example when you say data raw no meaning okay uh, let's uh, translate in into our situation as students who are using LMS for example there are 250 BSN2 um, students uh, students who are LMS users that is data okay what is 250 BSN2 students LMS users nothing no meaning okay it's a raw um, data then information, if you want to translate that into in information, uh, this is how you translate it. Uh, of the 250 BSN2 students, 95 uh, users visit the nursing informatics page, 150 users visit the maternal and child nursing page, 5 students just log in. Um, and out of the 250 users, 70% is age bracket 20 to 24 um, years old, 20% is 25 to 29 years old, and also 80% of the students access the LMS from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., while uh, the rest is 11 p.m. beyond. And usually this... Um, um, answers the question who what when and where okay this information who uses it okay what is the each bracket okay when are they using the lms where are they using the lms and where are these users okay that is an information okay how about knowledge okay for knowledge this is, uh, as we have said, this is uh, information that has been synthesized so, um, into relationships and being formalized. Or these are collection of information that can be made useful when you say knowledge. Collection of information made useful. Okay, They see the usefulness of this information. That's why uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a body of knowledge. Okay, And people who sees the importance of things of concepts they turn it to knowledge by uh, retaining it into their memories okay like when you review because you know that this is important concept in your profession you 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 treat that as a knowledge and you retain that in your minds in your memories for long periods of time and you see if if information answers the wh questions of who when where why or who what when where i should say um uh, knowledge answers the question how okay how 
how do they use their LMS okay, as an example how do the BSN2 students uh, use the LMS then we have wisdom okay the highest one when you say wisdom this is the last step and this considers the output from all levels and step and uh, they set them to other uh, human concepts and principles like morals and ethics okay and this war this wisdom answers the question why okay so when we are talking about um, morals and ethics um, we are talking about the rightness the wrongness the goodness the badness of your your um, your knowledge okay your the ethical dilemma as we can mention as we uh, try to relate it to ethics but when you say wisdom also the information that you have the knowledge actually that you have that job that you're applying should lead to improvement in the decisions that you're making okay in terms of uh, patient care okay so that is wisdom uh, so since we're talking about knowledge uh, nurses uh, has um, uh, relatedness or um, interrelationship with uh, nurses or with knowledge nurses and and knowledge nurses are considered to be knowledge workers knowledge acquirers knowledge users so knowledge workers are working with information and generating information and knowledge as a product they are acquirers by providing convenient and efficient means of capturing and storing knowledge so it's how you capture how you store your knowledge okay that's acquirers so uh, you can really acquire capture and store okay so, um, in in number one workers working um, and generating okay and also product you produce a product of knowledge as a knowledge worker and knowledge users are nurses who benefit from valuable or viable knowledge okay and fourth knowledge engineers these are nurses who design who develop implement and maintain knowledge in a certain scenario environment or situation knowledge managers uh, these are nurses uh, who captures and processes uh, expertise and distribute it where it can create the largest benefit okay um, especially with your colleagues if you you share your knowledge to everyone and knowledge developers or generators these are nurses who change and evolves uh, knowledge based on the task at hand and information available Then frameworks in nursing informatics. So nursing frameworks were proposed to illustrate dynamic interactions uh, occurring between nurses, computers, and enabling elements that optimize a user's um, ability to pass information via computers. Okay, so again, this illustrates interactions occurring between nurses and computers and the elements also that um, that maximizes optimizes the ability to process information via computers okay uh, although there are still limitations of these frameworks these theories these models okay especially this model because um, they did not explicitly make the patient part of the model okay uh, they did not define the context and they did not include all elements of nursing uh, meta paradigm if you remember the four meta paradigms in in nursing okay and i think we have two examples here of frameworks in nursing informatics one is from judith f ken uh, in 2003 
when uh, she proposed the Informatics Research Organizing Model or IROM which emphasized all elements of nursing paradigm including the system, nurse, patient, and health. Okay, I hope the picture is uh, clear okay, in your screens. Uh, informatics Research Organizing Model or IRO model, IROM, this um, organizing model is composed of two component models. As you can see, the first is the Systems Development Lifecycle or SDLC. This is a process model which is represented by the center wing as five distinct phases. Okay, which has the I think that's a gray one with arrows. Okay. And um, the uh, the the process model is represented by the center wing as five distinct phases and uh, evaluation sometimes considered the sixth phase is represented at occurring which occurs throughout the five phases okay uh, the second shown um, the second um, what is the second composition okay of the model is shown by the outer wing uh, represents the four constructs of the original systems research organizing model okay. and the IRO model the client construct okay these are the constructs we have the client construct okay it is composed of the data and information uh, collected from clients as well as client behaviors and characteristics then context uh, construct is the cultural, economic, and social environment in which the intervention occurs. Outcomes are the uh, information, knowledge, decisions, and out and actions uh, that emerge from the data okay, to improve cost, quality, safety, and satisfaction outcomes. And the other one is nursing informatics intervention. Okay, this correspond this construct uh, corresponds to nursing um, and describes the nursing informatics solution in terms of the content, the structure, the flow of the information, as well as technology used. And these two circles are dynamic models, okay, uh, but they are also distinct from each other, okay. Um, but without the other one, the outer wing and the inner wing or the outer circle and the, the inner circle, they are considered to be uh, incomplete. Okay, so um, tip is if you cannot see it clearly here in your screens, uh, I suggest that you open another tab and look for Judith Afghan um, Informatics Research Organization model. Okay, or the IRO model and look for this image okay so at any stage in the SDLC or the inner circle uh, for example we have there the the phases of design analysis implementation okay um, these are considered okay, concepts Although at first it may seem uh, counterintuitive, the arrow between clients and outcomes also goes both directions, as you can see in the other constructs. Okay, outcomes here is considered as the feedback loop, okay, of this model. Okay. And the SRO concept are connected by three different sets of arrows to represent the different levels of analysis um, at which the model may operate. Okay. Um, the corresponding multiple lines connecting the client to outcome and context to intervention have been omitted here to simplify the uh, design okay, based from the author. Okay. So, 
really uh, without the literature without the article it would really be a uh, challenge for the audience or for the reader to interpret the the models so that's why research is very important read reading uh, literature references is very important if you want to study uh, a, a model a, any any research model for that if you cannot really have a direct uh, interaction with the researcher or with the author okay the last one for this um, slide for this presentation is uh, the model by Gregory Alexander in 2007 he proposed a nurse patient uh, trajectory framework okay and uh, this was used in a certain um, in a certain uh, uh, research okay uh, research work um, they were saying that nurse patient trajectory framework can be used to predict uh, which information or structure or process and technologies can be used to achieve desired outcomes for patients and providers as well okay um, the research using this framework was able to design uh, a focus specifically on how nurses and patients interact um, with information systems and how those interactions influence decision making so here we are talking about nursing or nurses using information systems patients using information systems um, um, and they are saying that a nurse who is using a nurse uh, using informatics or using uh, information systems uh, can provide better uh, decisions and um, uh, what's this uh, care to to patients and likewise to patients who use information systems who use technologies um, can also okay uh, give himself and the healthcare team a better decision for his own treatment regimen okay and um, again uh, the information system influence okay uh, the the decision making and outcomes of the respective users whether they are nurses or uh, patients or other providers okay um, that is the framework of Gregory Alexander so in this uh, video lecture in this playlist we have um, uh, discussed different um, theories okay? uh, models and frameworks of uh, the nursing informatics and uh, human computer interactions always remember what we always uh, mentioned in this presentation there is no perfect there is no one best okay um, theory or model or framework to be applied in certain scenario situation or certain problem okay and um, being a nurse uh, for uh, from a nurse to being a nursing informaticist specialist uh, you have to undergo okay the um, novice to expert levels okay and that's all for this uh, video lecture series or uh, playlist uh, it's all about the theories models and frameworks supporting nursing informatics so um, just keep on subscribing following and liking this video and share it to others who you think needs it it also so thank you this is your email your online nursing educator bye